What if I told you that there were just four magic levers that any business could pull right now, this year, like this month, in order to dramatically scale and skyrocket your top line business revenue? Well, in today's training, I'm gonna be sharing with you what these four very strategic moves are. They're very simple, they're very easy. The crazy part to me is this, for whatever reason, most business owners overlook step number four when it's one of the most simplest and easiest ways to dramatically increase that business revenue, guys. We're talking all about it today in the training. Well guys, it's Rick Pino here with Get Wisdom. I wanna talk to you about one of the biggest problems that many businesses face when it comes to trying to increase their top line revenue. They just don't know what to do, right? And a lot of times we're thinking like, man, maybe I should do more of what I'm doing or maybe I should do a new this or do a new that or I don't know, maybe I should increase my prices, maybe I should lower my prices. And when in reality, see, a lot of people have this false belief when it comes to their business, many people have this false belief around the fact that like, oh man, making money is hard. But the truth is, making money is actually very, very simple when you learn how to do it. And that means that you can take this information that I'm gonna be giving you today in this training and you can use it powerfully to build your business and your life exactly the way that you desire it to be, okay? So what are these four levers or these four steps that any business can take? Let's come with me here to the board, dive right on in, check this out, okay? First step, okay? You have got to become a master at lead generation, okay? In fact, if you're taking notes, I want you to write this down, okay? Everything in business is downstream from lead generation. Think about that. Everything in business is downstream from lead generation, okay? I have many students, many clients, especially in my beginner, lower end programs, who they get all fired up, they're excited. I'm gonna start my business, or I'm gonna be a millionaire, I'm gonna go for it. And we're clapping for them. Yeah, you can do it, you can do it. And even though we give them the first steps of like, hey guys, here's how to generate leads, they just get super excited and they wanna jump ahead to like, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna work on my offer, I'm gonna work on my products. And uh, you know, they a lot of times they get disillusioned, they, they work so hard on their offer, they work so hard on the product, and they like, they've built the best whatever, the best program, the best course, the best offer, the best product that anyone has ever seen ever, oh my gosh, it's the best. And they spend months building it, and blood, sweat, and tears, and like so much of my heart and energy and passion into this, and then they launch it, and then they're like, what the heck, no one bought it. Like, this isn't for me and like, you know, I'm maybe maybe business isn't for me and I'm discouraged and blah, blah, blah. When in reality, the, the same kind of passion, energy, heart, and effort that they put into their product, they should have first done it with their lead generation. Because guys, if you don't have any leads, you don't have anybody to sell that product or that service or that program or whatever, you don't have anybody to sell to. So if you don't have leads, you don't have a business, okay? So what are the best ways to generate leads, okay? Let me, let me break it down here on the board, okay? One of the best ways to generate leads, this still works by the way, guys, is word of mouth, okay? Having a product or a service that is so awesome that people are just like, yo, you should check them out. Word of mouth or another way to say it is referrals, right? Referrals, okay? Um, you could do outbound, okay? This is outbound lead generation. Okay, this is where you are, oops, I don't know why I put that one on there. This is where you are reaching out to people in your niche and you are wanting to provide you know, some value to them. By the way, when it comes to lead generation, you don't want to lead with asking first, okay? You don't wanna be like, guys, buy my thing. And they're like, who the heck are you, right? Like that's not the best way to generate leads. The best way to generate leads, especially with outbound, is to provide value first. Like, Hey John, like maybe you're gonna join a couple of Facebook groups or whatever, right? And you're, you're joining Facebook groups that are in your niche, in your market, and you're getting in there and you're not spamming people with like, buy my thing, buy my thing. You're actually getting in there like, hey guys, here are three tips that everyone needs to know about XYZ, about your niche. Like, let me know in the comments if this was helpful. Or, you know, people are in those groups and they're asking questions like, does anybody know about this? Or what's the best that for your specific niche, right? You go in there and you provide value like, hey, this is, this is a way here. Or, Let me help you there. Or here's some value here. And you're just putting value, value, value out there. That's called outbound value lead generation, okay? And when you're out there reaching out to people, 
Okay, people are gonna be like, who the heck is this guy? Who the heck is this gal? This is awesome. Every time I pop in here, they're always providing value for people. They are actually, whenever you, you do enough outbound value, you're going to cause some curiosity in the market, right? Whenever you're putting value everywhere, people are gonna see you and be like, hey, what in the world? Like, they know what they're talking about. Like, yo, can you help me too? And then they're going to reach out to you, okay? And so, uh, obviously, inbound is another way. So, you know, if you put out enough outbound here, then in return, it's going to lead some, to some inbound leads, okay? And inbound leads are cool, especially if you've generated them with, you know, outbound value. And one, one way that I like to think about it is this, okay? You want to make yourself findable. A lot of people's problems when it comes to lead generation, there, there's a couple of things to consider here, okay? Number one, you might be like, you know, again, I have newbie students tell me this all the time, you know, they get, kinda get discouraged. You know, I, I, I reached out and I, I put value out there in the market and like, no, I didn't get a single lead. And then I'll ask them like, well, how much value did you put out? I posted three times in the past two months. Like, how come no one came? It's like, well, especially when it comes to lead generation when you don't have money for ads yet, it is a volume game, okay? So don't come and complain to me whenever you posted two times on Facebook and you didn't get a lead. Like, go post 200 times, 2,000 times per day, per week, and then talk to me if you have a lead problem or not. Chances are you won't, okay? Now, one of the cool parts about the inbound outbound connection here whenever it comes to lead generation Okay, uh, and this is organic by the way, so this would be organic. This is how to generate organic leads, okay? This is before you may or may not want to run ads yet or do any kind of promotions, that's fine. You could totally generate leads like this, okay? But when you're putting all the outbound value out there, right? And you are bringing value to the market, right? You're making yourself known, not by asking first, but by giving first. And more and more people are seeing you, this is awesome. It's going to, in return, lead to some inbound lead flow for you. One of the best ways to do this is to put out content around your thing, around your subject, in your niche, that just brings value to people, right? Like, I'm a big believer of not necessarily needing to chase down leads. Maybe in the beginning, you might need to chase some leads. Everyone starts there, right? But what's better than chasing down leads is having leads chasing you down. Right, and so how do you switch from me chasing down the leads to the leads chasing me down? Okay, well the best way to do this is instead of you trying to go find the leads, you need to put out such amazing outbound value into the market that the leads now can find you, okay? Whenever you switch this model up and, and you, you start making yourself findable instead of you trying to go find them, everything changes because now, instead of trying to pull the lever of chase, 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 now you're just pulling the lever of value, 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 and the more you can get seen, the more value you can give to the market, the more people are gonna be like, she really looks like she knows what she's talking about. He really knows like he looks like what he's talking about, and I wonder if they can help me, right? So that's the beauty of it when it comes to lead generation, okay? And obviously, um, you could do paid traffic as well. This one just moves faster, okay? I will say this, when it comes to uh, organic and paid, organic a lot of times, this is kind of the, let me put it like this, this is kind of the long burn, okay? This is kind of like the long haul play, right? Because if you, if you acquired a lead or a follower or something like that by providing value to them, chances are they're gonna stick with you for longer. Paid, okay, this is, this is more of the fast burn, Okay, this is more of like the, the fast way to get there. Um, just because you pay for a lead doesn't mean that they're endeared to you per se, but they hear about you quicker because you paid. So obviously paid, there's ads, right? There's all kinds of different ads. I would say, actually let me say this differently. There's, uh, right, paid ads, like Facebook, whatever. Facebook, you could do um, ads on Instagram, a lot of times Facebook and Instagram, the ads kind of coincide. You could do ads on YouTube, okay? Oops, YouTube, there we go. Okay, so the paid way to get there for lead generation is a fast way. The uh, long burn organic way to get there, it's they're more like die hard leads, they're more die hard uh, people in your ecosystem. Both of these are needed, by the way, okay? It's not one or the other. 
If you want to get there faster and you have a bunch of money to burn, go start buying up ads everywhere, okay? And I have a lot of people, especially the newer, again, the newer students, the newer clients who are like, yo, how do I get leads? Um, you know, where do I run ads? Like, should I buy on Facebook? Should I buy on Instagram? Should I buy on YouTube? Where should I buy ads at? And my coaching to them is always, well, you need to go where the attention is. Where is your market, right? Like, is your market like in blogs? Like there's a bunch of gamers right now who are like in blogs. Like is your market heavy on Reddit? Is your market heavy on YouTube? Is your market heavy on Instagram or Facebook or Twitter, wherever it's at? Like where is the attention already at? Again, instead of you trying to go chase, just make yourself findable where everyone's at already. Like if they're already like most of your market is really heavy on YouTube, Go run some YouTube ads, right? Like if your market is super, uh, maybe they're younger and they're super heavy on TikTok, go run some TikTok ads. If your market's kind of everywhere, then buy some ads everywhere and like test it out, right? So the first lever that everyone can pull to maximize, skyrocket, scale, their top line business revenue is lead generation because everything in business is downstream from lead generation, okay? So what's the second lever that we can pull? Check this out. Hey, I really hope that you're enjoying the video. I want to invite you guys. I have recently created a free training teaching people how to make money online. My students are literally making anywhere from five to $10,000 a month. And some of them even make hundreds of thousands of dollars, not in a year, but in a single day. If you want more information on how you can get started, all you need is a phone and a laptop. You can go to digitalproductacademy.org or you can click the link below in the description. Guys, after you watch the free training, if it sounds like it might be something cool for you to check out, you can book a free call with one of my client success coaches and they'll be able to help you more. Now, back to the video. All right, guys, so what's the second lever we can pull? Now that you got some leads coming in, you gotta learn how to convert them, okay? If you're taking notes, write this down. Immersion equals conversion. What does that mean? Immersion equals conversion. Well, the more immersed somebody is in your content, the more immersed they are in the value that you're putting out there into the market like we just talked about, the more immersed they are in who you are and the value that you have to bring to the market, the better chance you have at them converting into your offer, into your program, into your product, into your service. Like, think about that. Like. None of us would rather buy from a stranger, like, well, I guess I'll buy this thing from you. We would much rather buy from a company or a person, a brand that we know, like, and trust, right? Like, not everybody out there is just looking for the cheapest, quickest. Like, most people are gonna be like, you know, uh, it's, it's kind of like going down the street and like you have a Starbucks on the right side and you have a, a nasty little weird looking coffee shop on the left side and you really want coffee, well, most people are going to like, well, there's Starbucks, it's well lit, you know what I'm saying? Like people are like, oh, there's Starbucks. Oh, there's this other like weird looking little coffee shop there. Now here's the thing, they might have the most incredible coffee in the world. Like their coffee, it's actually not hard to make better coffee than Starbucks, but the point is like they could have 10 times more amazing coffee than Starbucks, but why are most people going to go to Starbucks? Because they know them, they like them, and they trust them. Okay, the same thing goes for you converting your leads. Now that you've got all these leads pouring in, now that you've made yourself findable, now that people are like, yo, you sound like you know what you're talking about, are you able to help me as well? Now that they're coming in, they're, they know you like you and trust you. So that's why that first part of lead generation is so critical, but if you want to convert them, okay? So yes, everything in business is downstream from lead generation, but you don't have a business if you can't convert these leads. Okay, so how are you going to convert them now that they're getting immersed in your content, immersed in your value, and they're like, yo, I would love for you to help me. How are you going to get them to convert? It's very, very simple. Check this out, okay? You are going to come up with an obvious solution to your markets. obvious problem, okay? That's what your offer is, that's what your product is, that's what your service is. You, got, you wanna get very, very clear on who you desire to serve because if you're not clear, you might be able to be bringing in some leads, but if you're not clear on how you can help these people, because that's all business is. Business is literally you just taking your solution, the thing that God has put on your life to help people with, 
and saying, yo guys, I have a solution to this XYZ problem. If you would like some help, I would love to help you. And then they come over and they go, yo, I would love help with my problem. You help them and they say thank you in the form of dollar signs, okay? That's, that's business 101. So how in the world do you get these people to, to convert to your product, to your service? Well, as they're becoming immersed, they're knowing you, they're getting to know you better, they like you more, they trust you more. If you have an obvious, check this out, if you have an obvious solution to their obvious problem, okay, I use this analogy quite often, but check this out. Like, let's say you uh, have a toothache, okay, and you're like, yo, my tooth really, really hurts. You have a problem. Well, what are you gonna do? Are you going to go to the shoe store? No, why? Because that's not, it's not an obvious solution to your obvious problem. I have an obvious problem. My tooth hurts. Where are you gonna go? You're going to go to the dentist. And chances are, you're not gonna go to like the back alley, who in the world, who the heck are they? Because you don't know them, you don't like them, you don't trust them yet, right? Because they haven't made themselves known, right? You're gonna go to the one that you see all the time or that you heard about, or maybe you got hit with some ads with or whatever it was. You're gonna go to them because you trust them more, you know them more, and you're gonna walk in and you say, yo, I got this obvious problem, my tooth is hurting, and they're gonna say, yo, perfect, you're in the right place. We have an obvious solution to your obvious problem. They're gonna hopefully fix your tooth pain for you, and guess what? You're gonna say thank you in the form of dollar signs, okay? Now, there are problems in every market, okay, that have solutions, but I want you to do some think work. If you're taking notes, write this down, think work. I need at least 10 people in the comments right now. Drop these words, think work. So you gotta, you gotta think about this. You gotta reverse engineer who it is that you are serving, okay? What, and, and here's the think work for you, okay? What are the very, very obvious problems in my market, in my niche, that everybody really, really, really desires to get solved, that maybe some people are solving it or not? How can I go to those problems how can I solve those problems in my market? Like, there's a difference between like, ow, I stubbed my pinky toe, boo hoo, and it's like, yo, my neck was accidentally, you know, sliced and there's like, it's on my, my artery, I need help immediately. Like, there, there's a difference of problems, right? A lot of people, a lot of businesses, they're trying to solve the pinky toe stub, like, well, we could do this, and because they're focused on trying to sell things that they desire to sell instead of selling things that the market desires, the problems that the market has to desire to get solved. Does that make sense? Like, the market has problems it desires to have solved. Go after those problems, not just the pinky toe problems. Go after the problems that are like, yo, I need help right now, my neck, please, somebody. Like, if you have an obvious solution, to their obvious problem, you are going to be able to convert these leads at a much quicker, faster, higher, stronger rate than if you're just trying to solve the, like I said, the pinky toe problem, right? Like, well, I guess I could or couldn't do that. And the difference between this is to have a product or a service that's a commodity, like a box of nails, okay? Like, you can go get a box of nails at this place or that place, probably at some gas stations, like, you know, and it's just like, they're a box of nails. But, but, like, what if it was like a boutique, specialized, whatever, done with you, done for you kind of product or service that absolutely, it's like white glove hold, holding their hand to like the, the problem that is so severe that they want it solved right now? Well, obviously, if it's a commodity, like, they can go anywhere to get it. So I wanna encourage you, one of the best ways to convert these leads is to come up with a product or service, right? Your solution to their, their problem, let it be a product or a service that is like really, really awesome, like insane crazy value that people are like, they, they almost feel unintelligent to tell you no to the obvious solution to their obvious problem. When you do this, okay, now you're, you're starting to get momentum now, right? You're making yourself findable. You are having leads chase you instead of you chasing them. Now that they're coming to you, what are you gonna do? You're gonna convert them next, right? How are you gonna convert them? Well, you are going to have an obvious solution to their obvious problem, not just the pinky toe problem. You're gonna go for like the big problems that you can solve because guess what? The smaller the problem that you solve, the smaller the money they're going to pay you to say thank you. The bigger the problem that you solve, the bigger the money they're going to pay you to say thank you, okay? So that's lever number two. What's lever number three? Check this out, okay? So now you've got leads coming in, okay? Now you're converting the leads, okay? Now what do you wanna do? 
Now, by the way, you never stop. You never, bring me back here, okay? Look me in the eyeball, okay? Look me in the eyeball, okay? None of these levers you just pull once, okay? All of these levers you are pulling every single day. And I think one of the big problems that a lot of business owners have is that they just, they like, oh, I got a couple leads, now I'm gonna try to convert them and I'm gonna pull the other two. When in reality, you need to be getting leads every single day because everything in business is downstream from lead generation. And then you need to be converting these leads every single day and you need to be doing step number three every day and step number four every day. If you can be pulling all these levers all the time, every single day, it's actually not that difficult, okay? But if you pull these levers, all of them, every single day, that's when everything begins to explode to the next level in your revenue. Anyways, a little rant for you. Back to step number three. What is step number three? You got the leads coming in. You're converting the leads, okay? Now, you wanna learn how to retain the leads, okay? Lead retention, okay? Lead retention, so what does that mean? It means you don't wanna just have somebody come and purchase from you one time. Like, what's better than someone who purchases from you one time? Well, that same person purchasing from you two times, okay? And the same person who purchased from you two times, getting them to purchase from you three times and on and on and on and on, okay? So how in the world do we, now that we've got the leads generated and now they're starting to convert, how in the world do we get them to, to stay paying us? Okay, well, there's a lot of different ways that you could do this, okay? You could have some kind of, oops. I am spelling this wrong. You could do a monthly membership. Okay, think of like, uh, think of Netflix, think of Spotify, right? Maybe, uh, geez, Amazon Prime, right? Like how do, how do all of us pay Amazon every single day outside of all the packages that we're buying from them all the time? We all, most of us have Amazon Prime, right? Like we're paying them monthly on top of paying them daily. Like there's, there's, I always say it like this, success leaves clues, right? Like, why are the big dogs doing this and they're making a bajillion, gazillion dollars and me and you are not? Like, you have got to follow the success clues that others are doing. So the way that Amazon is retaining us or even like Apple, okay? So Apple, yes, they're selling us iPhones and AirPods and cases for our phones and chargers and iPads and laptops and all that stuff, but guess what? They also have Apple Care, right? Which you pay Apple Care. They also have iTunes, like, or uh, what is it called? Apple Music now, it used to be called iTunes. They have Apple Music where you could like pay monthly to listen to their music, right? And I'm gonna talk about that in the next lever here, but think of different ways. Remember what I said earlier, think work? Come on, drop, drop it one more time in the comments for me. Think work. You gotta put in the think work, man. Okay, so think of all the ways, okay, what are the problems that my market has? How can I solve those problems? And how can I continue to bring value to them, continue to solve those problems on an ongoing basis to where they continue to pay me, not once, but more, more than once, right? Maybe every month or every quarter, or every, every year or whatever it is, okay? So number one, you could do like a, a monthly membership site. Um, you could actually become the bank and you could offer Payment plans, right? Like, it's pretty cool. I, I have a couple of payment plans for a couple of my businesses, and basically I kind of become the bank for some of my clients, and instead of them paying like X up front, I'll say, yo, um, instead of it being, whatever, instead of it being 50K, right? Um, you could either pay 50K up front, or if you'd like to, to get on a payment plan, you could do uh, three payments of 20K. Right, so now I just became the bank, and guess what? The same way the bank charges me and you interest, I'm gonna charge them interest. If they want to leverage me as their bank and get on a payment plan, I'm gonna put a little bit of interest on there, and it's okay, that's part of business as well. So think of all the different ways on how you can provide value, right, to your, to your clients, not just once, but all the time. So in that think work that you're doing on step number two in the conversion step, okay, you need to be thinking, okay, yes, what are those immediate, oh my gosh, my neck, like those humongous problems, 
But what are an, what's an obvious solution to that afterward? Well, in that case of the neck, and this is like a weird, you know, kind of morbid example, but you know, let's say it's the neck thing, right? And, and they come to you like, my neck, help. And you like sew up their neck and it's all good. Well, how are you gonna get them to continue to pay you? Maybe you prescribe them a medication or maybe you have a monthly or a weekly doctor's visit until it's healed, right? Like think of how in the world can I serve them gigantic value up front and then consistent value on the back because whenever you're offering consistent value on the back of whatever problem you solved on the front, this is how you can get people to stay. You want to have your clients be sticky, okay? You don't want them just to pay one and done, right? You want to have a sticky client, someone who sticks with you. Again, back to the Starbucks model, okay? You might be thinking like, well, I only, I only buy Starbucks like once every week. Well, guess what? Maybe that's you, but there's a ton of people out there who Starbucks is like, yo, download our app, upload money on here, and I, I probably have at least 20 or 30 bucks on my Starbucks app, app right now that I didn't even know that I had, right? Like they're, they're providing a lot of inroads, a lot of highways for you to be able to pay them because they're providing value for you. So I wanna ask you, what are some different ways that you and your business, okay, now that you have generated the leads, now that you're converting the leads, what are some clever ways that you can retain these leads? Because here's something really, really cool, okay? In fact, if you're taking notes or at least in the comments, drop these words, okay? A customer is a customer is a customer is a customer. What does that mean? It means, Anyone who buys from you once is very likely to buy from you twice. And if they buy from you twice, they're very likely to buy from you three times. And if they buy from you three times, they're even more likely to buy from you four times. So why do we want to generate the leads? Why do we want to convert the leads, get them to buy our product or service? And then why do we want to retain them? Because guys, I'm telling you right now, like keeping a client paying you is much easier than going out there and trying to find a new client. Like it's not impossible and it's it's fun and you can absolutely do it by pulling those first couple levers that I showed you. But guess what's even easier? Like the person who already knows you, likes you, trusts you and paid you already, like getting them some value that they could pay you back for like on a consistent basis, it's just easier than trying to go get a total stranger out there. Hey, what's up? I can bring you value. And then bringing them into your system. That's part of it, right? But easier way to make money is just to retain who you have in your clientele, okay? In your, in your um, ecosystem. And lastly, guys, lastly. Hey, real quick, if you've made it this far into the video and you're liking it, do me a favor, share this video with somebody that you think might also receive some value. My biggest heart in this channel is to simply bring some awareness, financial literacy, and do it all from a biblical perspective. So go ahead and share the video, like and subscribe, do all that stuff too, back to the video. Okay, now that we have got lead generation going, now that we've got the conversions, now that we retain them, lead ascension. What is this? Okay. Well, um, there is a concept in business called vertical integration. What does that mean? Okay. Well, essentially what vertical integration means is that you want to sell something that sells something that sells something that sells something. This is almost like a compound effect on top of what we just talked about with the retention lever. Okay. So you're generating leads and then you're converting them to your product or service and then you're going to retain them. And one of the best ways to retain them is to actually ascend them into a higher level of value, okay? Like think about this, okay? Let's say you've got a, uh, a course, okay? And let's say your course is whatever, uh, 997, okay? And maybe on the back end, you have a a monthly membership for your coaching, okay? So on the front end, they paid you the 997 and you're like, yo, if you want monthly support with our monthly coaching call, you should absolutely consider the monthly membership as well. Okay, so now you've converted them, now you're retaining them, but guess what? What if on the back end of your course, okay, you also had a a group coaching program that was, I don't know, 5,000 bucks or something, right? Think about this, like the person who paid you 997 up front 
and 47 bucks a month or whatever it is, right? They're gonna be way, way, way more likely to go, you know what, especially if you've delivered on value and you've provided crazy value to them, they're gonna be way more likely to be like, you know what, this is awesome, I love her, I love him, they've really helped me in my journey with XYZ, whatever your niche is, and you go, yo, if you love the course, if you love the membership, you should consider upgrading into the group coaching program. It's only $49.97, it's only 5,000 bucks, and I'm telling you this right now, like the ascension play, this is what I was saying at the beginning of the training, okay? Most business owners, they don't even consider ascending their clients, okay? They're, they're not thinking on vertical integration. They're not thinking on, I wanna sell something that sells something that sells something that sells something. Think about it, back to Apple, okay? Apple sells tickets to its big presentation every year. Okay, so it sold something. And then at the presentation, it's a big marketing pitch. Yo, we have this new phone and these new AirPods and this new thing. So they sold something that's selling something. And then whenever you go buy the new, whatever, the new uh, iPhone, they sold you something that sold you something. And you're like, yo, I got the new iPhone. They're like, yo, that iPhone would look really, really good with some new AirPods. What are you gonna, how are you gonna listen to music? Oh, you're right. So then they sold something that sold something. Like, I will take the AirPods. And then they're gonna be like, yo, I mean, I don't know what music you're gonna listen to, but we have this thing called Apple Music. You could pay us every single month. And then now you can have like a whole entire system to where you pay us for our music, you can stream our music anytime you want, and then you can run it all from your phone. And so they sold something that sold something that sold something that sold something. And then now that you're like in their ecosystem, right? They just continue on in the vertical integration loop of selling something that sells something that sells something. Okay, and so by this, basically they're ascending us into the next thing because after we just spend, you know, two, three thousand bucks, five thousand bucks on a new laptop, phone, AirPods, whatever it is, and we have Apple Music every month and we're paying for Apple Care and all this stuff, okay? Like literally in September, the next year, like, yo, we have the brand new phone. And guess what they're doing? They're ascending us. Again, they, they are, they've already acquired us as leads, they've already converted us, they've already retained us, now they're ascending us into the next thing. So as you're doing your think work, I want you to highly consider what are the ways that I can generate the leads, provide value out there to the market, what are the ways that I can convert those leads, now that I'm making myself findable, how can those leads be converted by providing an obvious solution to their obvious problem? How can I retain those leads so that they can pay me consistently instead of just paying me once? And as they're paying me consistently, what are the ways can I put together some new kind of products or services or done for you, done with you services to where I could say, yo, you know, you, you paid me whatever, the 500 bucks, the 1,000 bucks, the 2,000. We also have this thing on the back end. It's 5,000, it's 10,000, it's 20,000, where people are like, dude, that sounds amazing. I would love that. You've, you've really helped me in these first things. I know you're gonna help me here. Guys, these right here are those magic four levers that any business can pull, like I said, as early as this year, as early as this month, when you pull these four levers, okay? Lead generation, lead conversion, lead retention, and lead ascension, okay? Really the last two are customer retention, customer ascension. When you pull these four levers, you will have no problem scaling and skyrocketing your business revenue to out of control levels, as well as having a consistent, steady flow of income for you and your business. We'll see you in the next training.